Dear friends, I am yeah. really excited to introduce my guest on this episode of Chat with Chitra. He is a classical violinist, a composer and a professional conductor. He has worked with eminent composers and directors in the film industry. He is truly an inspiration to us all. I have great pleasure in welcoming Mr. Srinivas Murthy. Namaskar. Namaskar. How are you today? I am good. I hope you are all good too. Yeah. Yes, we are, we are keeping well. Thank you. Thank you. Good to hear that you are all good at keeping well and staying safe. You are an incredibly talented violinist. Why did you uh, decide to become a, a composer? I think I, am, I was never an incredible violinist. No, I was an okay. I was an okay violinist. It all started off, uh, I, mean, I started learning while in very young age. It was only Carnatic classical music. Mm. And then when I grew up and then when I um, came into Chennai, it was in 1978. Uh, then Mr. SPB, as we all call S.P. Balasubramaniam, yes. the renowned playback singer. He happened to once listen to my violin playing there in Bangalore, where that's where I hail from. I'm born and brought up in Bangalore. Uh, then he asked, he, it was just mentioned casually, then why don't you come to Madras? You can take cinema, play you know, musicianship as a profession and things. And I thought it was good. That's how I came here. And he has been instrumental. For everything that I am now, whatever I am now is because of him. Fantastic. And everything else, everything else. Now he has been my godfather too. Right. And then the, it, it was only classical violin I learned. Okay. Classical, Indian, that is Carnatic classical music. Mm. It was for a very long time. It was, uh, I had a very good teacher, fortunately, a, a father like man to me. Mr. A. V. Naranapa, he is no more with us, long, long, long. Mm. And after that, as I grew up, took up uh, like um, a taste for film music too. As I came into college, you no know, little film music was there. Because there, in, the, in Bangalore, it was mostly Hindi films running. Right. Okay. right. And then I grew up listening to them all. So many music directors, so many composers. Everyone had their own distinct style. Everyone, oh. everybody, and everybody's film used to run at the same time. Mm. Everybody's songs were hit. Mm. Everybody was distinct, different from each other. Oh. Very good. That, that was how uh, I got a taste for it. And then slowly we started a small group in the college music group, then started playing here and there. And that is when mm. uh, Balusar saw saw me somewhere. Oh, right. Okay. Then he suggested me to come to Chennai and take up this as a profession. He said, you're playing well, why don't you come in? And that's how I came in here and then I wanted to become a soloist, solo violinist. Uh -huh. I mean, that was what I was doing there in back in Bangalore. I was the only violinist in there and so I was a soloist. Okay. That's how it was. But then after coming here, hmm. seeing so many, so refined uh, excellent solo violinists here in China. Mm. Mm. Mm, I knew I had never, I, I had no chance. That was what it was. Then slowly, I wanted to, actually I wanted to go back, go back to Bangalore. Oh, okay. And it was, uh, it was Balusar who insisted that I stay back here. And then how it was. Then slowly, what else I could do? Uh, arranging and composing, observing all of them, all the other conductors. Mm -hmm. Those days, music uh, was recorded all together. All the musicians, the singing track, everything together. Even rehearsals were done together. Mm -hmm. We all used to assemble early morning at 7 o'clock, mm -hmm. right, rehearse everything till around 11, 30, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. That's when the uh, singer used to come in. Right. Artists used to come in. Then even they used to learn then and there, practice with all the musicians sitting around, and then start the taking and things. That used to maybe five takes, six takes, seven takes. Anybody making mistake, then you have to start all over again. 
Oh, okay. mistake happens in the last interlude, in the third interlude somewhere. There is no other. Go back again from start to the beginning. There was, there was not a multi-track recording in that. Right. Not like uh, present days. Then I was observing all those people wherever I worked. It was Balu sir who introduced me there to so many music directors, saying that I am a new one, Mr. Bangu one, and that's how I got in. Then there were so many beautiful conductors those days. Mr. Gunesh Singh was a flautist, and so many of the musicians and uh, the directors then producers. Everybody used to call him as Krishna himself, Lord Krishna himself. He used to be such a beautiful uh, flautist, Gunesh Singh. Oh. He hailed from Mysore. Right. He hailed from Mysore. Okay. So observed him doing it. Then there was Mr. L. Vaidyanathan, yes. a very known violinist and a conductor too. He was a conductor there. Mm. Then, for observation only. Because uh, actually, I did not learn anything from anybody. Like it was only observing and learning, listening to what they do. And and those days they all used to compose then and there. With all the musicians around us, amazing. Mm. Either they used to have a piano or a harmonium. Yes. Compose on that, mm. then and there, and they all used to write uh, music and play our parts. That's the thing. Right. So keen observation and things. Perhaps I learned a lot from them all. Every composer, you know, the, only the song used to be. Uh, um, they would have composed the song earlier in the. Maybe in the film company office or somewhere else. I used to even observe how they would have composed it, and for that given piece of lyric, yeah. which I used to listen to that after the, during the recording time. So all these things perhaps made me, I don't, know, made me uh, a conductor later on, and the opportunity came. I was ready to take up that opportunity because I was uh, very keenly observing. All these people here, around me. and they were all. Everybody was a teacher to me then. Every conductor, every recording session, it was a classroom to me. Though I was playing as a session violinist, I was so much immersed in learning only so with with all of them, from all of them. That's what it is. Amazing, amazing. Mm. Can... Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, I can definitely see uh, you. Uh, you you rose to the uh, rose up to the challenge and became a very successful uh, person and earned a very respectable position in the industry. And that too came accidentally. So, do you do you think because you've already had a, a classical background um, when you started in your initial years, this has certainly helped you uh, in your composing and uh, arranging film music as such. Yes, of course. Learning Carnatic music, we all know that. I mean, the whole world knows it. It's so very intricate. It's just treasure trove. It has got so many things in that. Uh, learning that extensively for a long time, I had already gained some amount of knowledge. Now I don't say that I know everything. It's a it's a very it's a vast ocean. I knew I knew something. That definitely made everything easier for me. Everything adopting myself to Western music. Or to a little bit of jazz. I am still learning jazz. I did not. I don't know. Fantastic. Yeah, I I can't agree uh, more with you because a strong a classical foundation certainly makes you a very adaptable musician. And uh, understanding the exactly uh, understanding the nuances and intricacies uh, helps you to adapt to any style of music. I can sure see that you have gained a lot of inspiration from many uh, legendary uh, composers and uh, musicians, uh, and working with such established musicians certainly helps you to enhance your skills as a musician and a composer. See, that was yes, yes, yes. When I first okay, when I grew up, when at my learning stages, when I was young, I used to listen to. So when I came to come into film music only, there were so many music directors. In Canada, there was Rajan Nagendra, G. K. Venkatesh, Vijay Bhaskar, Upendra Kumar. In Hindi, there were Shankar Jaykishan, mm. Salim Chaudhary, mm. Lakshmi Kant Paralal, S. D. Burman, Madan Mohan. All of them. It was like you know, it's a music festival. Whenever you go to a film, every song is beautiful. Every even the background score are beautiful. Everything background score involves. 
So later on coming to Chennai, it mm-hmm. was uh, when I came to Chennai, it was uh, Ilai Raja's time. He, he had just then started off, uh, maybe one or two years earlier. Then what? There was nothing at all. He had he had taken over everybody here that day when he started off. Yeah. Even his first song came like that, and that's all. Everybody who wanted to listen, I was I was just a slave. That's all. He was my god. He was everything. And there are so many gods were around. And Ilaraja was something so huge personality, and I mean, in music, yeah. so very huge and nothing at all. Just see Ilaraja's name, and I used to go to the film, even though I did not understand much of Tamil those days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just knowing is that he has done music, go to the film, and everything was good. Later on, mm-hmm. those days, uh, I'm talking about much younger days. Mm-hmm. I have never. Imagine that I would see all those big stars this year. And after I came to Chennai, I played violin for Lakshmi Kant Paralalji also. He used to record a lot of uh, background background films, uh, background music here in Chennai. Mm-hmm. With our string section, he used to get all his musicians down here, and our string section used to join their orchestra. And we all used to do that. Like that, I have played for R D Burman too. It is very rare, and Salil Chowdhury, whom I have never, I have never dreamt of seeing them also, all in my life. Tata Ji, Asha Bhosle, I never thought I would work with them. It so happened after I joined the Rahman in ninety one, ninety one, ninety ninety. Yeah. So there, that work started off, and then I had to work with a lot of North Indian artists. I had never. It was something like it was a dream come true, like him, working with those. Uh, they were all stalwarts, like you know how do I say? Another word. Legends in their own rights, right? Legends of everybody. So I had never dreamt of him doing that, but I was lucky enough, perhaps. I was. I've worked with them all. I mean, out of in Chennai, in Mumbai, in Chennai, in Mumbai also. Prior to uh, your working with Dr. A. R. Rahman, you've also you worked with uh, Ilai Raja sir. Yeah, I worked. That was A. R. Rahman's time was around ninety, nineteen ninety. I think nineteen ninety we were started working on the film. Okay. I think ninety end of ninety or early ninety one. Roja was released. That was his first. Yes. So okay. we had started working a little earlier yeah. than. So even before that, I was a, when I was a violinist. I used to work for. Ilai Raja too for a couple of years, maybe two or three years or so. And later on, when I became a conductor, I stopped freelancing. Mm. No, no, I used to freelance till ninety one, till ninety one, till I joined Rama. Mm. Somewhere in ninety two or ninety three, I stopped freelancing and only started. There was so much work to do and so much to learn, and mm. I stayed back. That's it. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, every recording session, even with Ilai Raja, was. And I tell you, it was a classroom. It is. Always a class. Yes. How do you do these recordings? Do you can you share with us as to uh, how how does he actually compose? It? Does does he compose uh, then and there? Uh, how is it? How is the? Way? Oh yeah 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 yeah. Very spontaneous composer. Like I've seen so many. I've worked with a lot of composers. One is uh, Sri M S Vishnadan. He used to compose there and there on the stage. Uh, With all the musicians around, he used to compose songs. He used to do it. Where I guess, like you know, he has come from the same. He he regards M S V as his guru and thing. Our one the Raja Sir one the he will not even sound his instrument. There used to be a harmonium in front of him yeah. or keyboard. There so many there were so many instruments. He never even used to sound one note or his reference, uh, Sudhi reference or anything else. No. It all in his work was done in his brain only. He used to take a pen and paper. Yes, it was there on the harmony. Just keep writing, and that was he, what he does. It just is. This way, I am talking about the background score. He used to come first. He is always on time. Seven o'clock shift. He is always there much before earlier, maybe five ten minutes earlier. He used to write everybody's part on different uh, scales, like oh, multi clef. So he used to write like that, very intricate. Sometimes very very difficult music to. Used to just write, no song. 
there was absolutely no sound of any note anywhere on any instrument that is all used to come forward everything used to come come out spontaneously never used to pause also finish everything and then get up and go no wonder he's a master uh, i mean thank you so much for sharing with us i would be even keen if you could share maybe you know a, a, a some instance working with your working with uh, ar rahman if you can share with us any any background music any experience when, of yours when he himself became a composer uh, when i joined in that room yeah so compose the song for the director sick then the you have to used to go to the lyricist the tuner had to go to the lyricist for writing yeah. then a recording date schedule is fixed and then we all go there on the recording day then mm-hmm. i go inside i go inside to him then we both sit down he then that's it he'll just play something else and he said no if he doesn't like it correct do anything else and then and the writer as and when he was right uh, playing i used to write that's how it used to happen no even the song even the song you have to do song or see the song tune is different for the for the song there has so many things other things there has to be a prelude there has to be interlude there has to be an obligate over the song so all these things on this set only the song is composed elsewhere and that is when the director okays it and that is given to the lyricist for writing the other thing for the song it was done on the set only he and he used to be there and we used to do that so you this goes for the background also for the background he, he had his own uh, computer there a mm-hmm. uh, monitor everything Mm-hmm. this was in 1991 so by then computer mm-hmm. uh, slowly had come in yeah good that was early stages of uh, computer right right i mean it's so very inspiring uh, to hear your experiences i've actually listened to a couple of your pieces uh, recently i really enjoyed uh, the piece you have composed for kandanal uh, mudalai kadal perigudari maduvanti such an amazing composition and i think this has been performed uh, by sunshine orchestra for whom you are the mentor uh, for the young children there right yes ma'am right. this is sunshine orchestra i think it it belongs to your raman foundation oh right it was the brain child of raman okay. was the brain child of raman uh-huh. uh i'll tell you i'll go back a little sure uh, on invasion of electronics i cannot i should not call it invasion but uh, yes it was invasion of electronics there were a lot of musicians lost the job because this hmm acoustic musicians lost the job because of invasion of because one keyboard can do uh, what 50 musicians can do 100 musicians and then slowly slowly gradually uh, acoustic musicians were going down Now, number of acoustic musicians are there. Mm. Like a violinist, there won't be any violinist. I will tell you uh, the fact: all the violinists now, now mm. current, mm. or uh, of my age, or or maybe ten years younger too. Mm. That is now, now present. In another ten years, no one see any violinist at all. Mm. That was the key. That was happening even there. He had, he had no musicians. There was no symphony. First thing, we don't have symphony orchestra. Mm. Yeah. And then there were no youngsters taking up uh, acoustic instruments. Anybody who wanted to do music either was in guitar or in keyboard. Nobody used to take up shayana. Nobody used to take up sitar. Nobody used to take up violin. All acoustic. They are difficult. Yeah, acoustic. Sure. That is when he started to start to do that. And then he had started off. He had started off. Uh, taking up children from the corporation school and adopt adopt them them and imparting them music knowledge at some point of time maybe 2 years later i was brought into that some reason okay i was brought into that and i was a little skeptical i didn't want to do actually uh, like listening to all those ah he showed me a video he it showed me it so once then it said can you take over this on seeing that video oh, it was pathetic very pathetic very, very difficult for me to listen to all the uh, bad information and i didn't want to 
Hmm. Yeah, he had been calling me several times earlier too. I was refusing. Hmm. But sometime uh, at that particular day, uh, he my daughter was here too that time she was something daughter asked why are you here and this is what happened someone and said you want to be to go on to go no i don't have a time to do again this is all that now as such i was shouting in the recording here i usually shout at recording here to yell at so much i can't get to hear the regular musicians so much i don't want i don't want then my daughter said okay then what if your teacher would have told you same thing would you have become a musician mm-hmm. invariably i would have also played all those the first one yeah. yeah all those wrong intonations and somebody else had a patience teach me that teach me music in spite of me playing all those bad intonations why are you refusing why are you refusing? Then I said, it somehow struck me here. Then I next morning I accepted. I told Rama that I'll go and look at it. And that's how I I was brought in there. And then in about six months, it took about six months for me to know the child. They come. They were all first generation musician. They were all uh, very young. They were very young, around ten years, eleven years, that age. Uh, they were all. from a little economically backward uh, family and to know each one of them there was a sort of barrier between the teacher and the student no that, that was what the problem was right. whatever teacher says they are they are just like you know everybody is in a shell they want to win smile you ask 100 times they won't they won't talk at all because they are all in a shell. Sort of shit, and none of them music. They are all first generation, first oh. generation. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Really took a long time to you know, get along with them. Right. And today they are all in a very good state, playing good music. They are also become uh, little bread earners for their families also now. Okay, okay. It was three years since two, three years, three years. Good, good way, good progress. Yeah, I mean the the way how you have uh, shared your experience is really inspiring because uh, um, these children uh, whom you have mentored did not have any kind of exposure to music and uh, so did no. their families, right? So you have to slowly even grab- when they come, sorry, when they joined us, when they joined the foundation. Yeah. Most of them had never seen what a cello was. Most of them did not know what a violin was, and we wanted to promote only acoustic music. First. So that is why we started off with violin, viola, cello, only, only string section. Right. Now oh. we have introduced. Now we have introduced brass also, trumpets, trombone, horns. Now maybe in three years now, three years. Right. So right. So it was always acoustic with them. Now they are doing very well. Doing very well. and what you heard perhaps was i had sent you some music right that was uh, that was a classroom recording should i don't know how it sounded i do not know it was brilliant it Now, was i loved it take up take up kar and they also play western music they they play a little bit of they they play a little bit of jazz they play a little bit of western music hmm hmm all sort of genres uh, i take up some rajasthani folk i do something else to learn everything Whatever may is interesting to me, I teach them. So gradually, you are introducing well. different facets of music to them. In addition to, it uh, is like, yeah, it is like building a library to them. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. It's slowly building a library, and all so there are they are now playing a lot of uh, very old classic film songs, mm-hmm. both mm-hmm. in Tamil and also in Hindi. Mm-hmm. Now I'm slowly. I want to take them up in other languages in Malayalam too. Why not? All languages are good. Yes, yes. So slowly, all sort of, all genres. I'm building them a library. So. Amazing. Yeah. How do you compose music? What is your creative process like? A little difficult to answer. Like uh, how to compose? Can there is? Uh, I don't think anybody can teach anybody composing music. It has to come from within. 
how it comes there has to be an inspiration some motivation to do that that is all but what exactly is the formula to compose god knows nobody can teach anybody nobody can teach anybody uh, maybe this have listened to a lot of music earlier lot of film i'm, I'm only talking about film music that's, that's only talk about film music. now i have played also a lot with so many different music theater directors heard their compositions and analyzed them all perhaps that so i am able to do it on my own mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so many different people like when i was in college i used to listen to salil choudhury the way he composes composes music is it's nobody's business man come on it doesn't go into it how does he does it how does it strike him yeah so beautiful indian music so he was he was i think he was a, a doctorate in western music also salil choudhury ji i find right he was equally exponent in uh, indian music too He has done some fantastic Carnatic um, uh, English, uh, Indian uh, music-based uh, film songs in, in Hindi and Bengali. And how good it is to I used to listen to them all, listen to everybody, and finally that somehow took some shape from my head. Motivation is what we get from others. True. Inspiration yeah. it's always there, all around us. We have to only look at that particular direction, and we can take it. it is there everywhere just look at it be get it that's it and somebody has to motivate and now this was my profession <laughs> there is no necessity of motivating i had to i had to work that's yeah. it cuz it's that's very insightful uh, i mean we learn a lot uh, uh, you know when i was young uh, as a child my parents my gurus always used to tell me you have to listen to more of music and uh, and uh, voluntarily or involuntarily you yeah yeah certain uh, you know certain aspects of those music and it is there inside you all that you need to do to unleash it is to uh, you know maybe get a formal training and get it much more in a uh, better structured way as such but listening to music and so basically that has actually in other words uh, that has also complemented you in your composing you have heard so many people do it from there it's, it's all it's actually borrowed that's what i should say but it is spontaneous we all call you don't want to call it is borrowed okay this mind no but everything so much of listening there will be something remaining inside all that put together something else comes out you beautifully put it uh, you know uh, that's that's the thing we can all take something yeah. from that for sure yeah yeah so, lockdown has uh, really affected the lives of everyone health workers musicians teachers and everyone now actually i was talking to some artists the other day and uh, they mentioned how lockdown has affected their lives as a uh, uh, you know as teachers and musicians obviously lockdown has increased the uh, online reach for many but technology has its own limitations now how has life changed during the lockdown period it's very sad that a lot so people are suffering because of this pandemic all over the world that is true it has affected a lot of people in different ways different people in different ways not everybody in the same way but different people in different ways. i would rather say it's more affected the younger ones the younger generation who have a lot of dreams i have in their life to do that do this and do this and what not for example only sanction i'm talking about a sanction they may have all all of them are around 21 22 years of age or something that age they all came to me about 10 to 11 10 years ago so now they should be around 21 years of age. so each one of them should have had should have maybe they have, they all had planned planned a lot of things all that went for a six year now even so, their professional things they See, at least as of i know well, we had around 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 nine concerts were cancelled which were already contracted so uh, nine con- nine concerts or nine concerts for the musicians right for them and every day is practice first few months they could not practice because it was all of a sudden it happened it, the instruments were all locked up in the school 
in the college mm-hmm. uh later on then we could take one one by one one day we brought everything only one person went there and brought everything and then they all have now they this lockout period of course there was one prevent they could not earn money mm-hmm. there were no recordings no nothing no concerts all the concerts were cancelled yeah so that way it's a loss but now they all have realized yeah. that they should practice and this is the time for them to practice yeah i mean i i completely agree with you it's very important for us to stay in touch with the younger musicians uh, to and continue to motivate and inspire them through this period and it's it's a good opportunity i would say for all the young musicians to uh, you know utilize this lockdown period for uh, you know improving yes. their uh, their musical ability improving their own caliber yeah so this lockdown has helped me in coping up with a lot of issues at home with a family attack been spending my all my time with my family because i was so busy when i was young and i never saw my children grow up. ah that's how no perhaps that's how perhaps sunshine came to me and i have seen those children grow up. because they are more or less uh, they spend more time with me than their own parents oh so that's how it is and i am only sorry for the youngsters all over all over the world because that they may have a lot of dreams may have been ruined yeah true yeah. but they have to improve their own standards they have to think and do that yeah and so what would be uh, your word of advice to the youngsters out here i mean during this lockdown and after the lockdown also uh, you know some of them might be uh, very uh, keen to pursue on this path of taking music as a as a career So, what do you think uh, would be your best advice to all those young musicians uh, who would like to tread on this path? Any musician, if they are new to the profession, they have just started to take music as a profession or whatever, or any profession that that matter, they have to only slog like donkeys and work, yes. work hard, 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 and hard. Mm. There is no magic. It doesn't come like just like that. They have to put in their hard, hard work with that. So much sounds. Now, along with that, yes, they work hard. They will also gain a lot of knowledge out of it. They will practice well, play well, everything right. They need to get a lot of other things also to right. Mm-hmm. Like they should improve their own what do you call PR, public relationship. They mm-hmm. have to maintain very good public relation. They have to start gaining that. They have to they have to branch out and see that. Uh, they reach everybody yeah. and upon reaching upon reaching they have mm. to maintain it so they have to be patient and have to go there and see them or whoever it is whichever profession and more so in music they need to be in touch with a lot of people always they need to be in circulation everywhere and think they have to they have to have an open mind for learning all the while all the while they need to keep learning their standards are Audience, that's it. Then they can try that. Amazing, yeah. Of course, then nowadays there are certain other things happening, like you know, favoritism and things. So many. Yeah, favoritism was there uh, since long. Yeah. Other things. Yeah, it was ever. It was always there. Yes. So instead of worrying about it, forget that. Keep moving on. Go to the next job. Take up the next one. Go there. See the other person. Forget him. Go next one. That's mm-hmm. it. They can still do that. Yeah, I think uh, that's very insightful because uh, the first thing is a willingness to learn. Uh, you know, that's very important to any career. Yeah, they should. They have to keep learning, 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 learning all the time. Very true. Well, it's beautifully put. Um, so, to you, um, as a musician and a composer, what would be your definition of success? It's just the opposite of failure. But for me, I think as a musician, success is uh, making uh, people happy uh, through our music, and uh, uh, you know, making the world a better place to live. And uh, I would also claim to uh, that you know, I would be successful if I could make a positive impact on the younger generations uh, through music. And um, so that's how I think you are. Uh, you are uh, a positive inspiration to as a mentor. to the uh, the youngsters to the young children at the sunshine orchestra and yeah what you said was all true everything is right perfect 
just got a, uh, I've seen composers, okay, let me go back. I've seen composers who are extremely lucky, extremely lucky. Mm-hmm. And I've seen certain musicians who are not lucky at all, but they are extremely very good composers. Uh-huh. But they don't see, get, they don't get to see that limelight at all. So that element of luck is also needed. A little bit. I've seen both. There are musicians who are successful even playing or composing everywhere. And there are players who are just mediocre but very busy because of so many things. They're, they're, they're luck. And there are certain musicians who are fantastic musicians but with very little work. No luck. Mm. And composers, they don't get chance for a film or whatever, they do not get a chance. But they are fantastic composers. Mm. Everything is possible. So you need a bit of luck also, an element of luck also there to shine. Success, okay. Uh, We all enjoy success when it comes to us uh, at the right moment. Yes. Mm. What? What if success comes to me at around 70 years or 8 years of age? So, it has to come in the right age also for you to enjoy that. Very true. So, there are so many things put together. Uh, we don't know. The, ultimately, I would say the destiny leaves us wherever. Maybe success or wherever. Destiny leaves us to that point. Amazing. Amazing. That is amazing. That, that's, that's so very true. And... Um, yeah, it makes a, uh, that, that's the only way we call it, some people call it luck, some people uh, call it uh, God's grace, God's blessings. Yeah, 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 yeah. All, all together, I would call it destiny. My <laughs> destiny takes where I have to go and that's each person. Sure. Uh, likewise, karma philosophy says something, karma, yeah, my karma takes me there. Yeah, could be possible. Amazing. So um, I'm sure um, once uh, this uh, lockdown is over, um, uh, I wish uh, the uh, orchestra all the very best and uh, many more successes in the years to come. This concludes the first segment of the uh, talk show. Describe yourself in three words. A simple human being. Simple human being. Fantastic. Okay. Um, If you were an animal, what animal would you be and why? Okay. A cow. Everything is useful there. Cow gives us milk. The cow's skin gives us height. For your shoes and your jackets and so many things. Everything is good. Right. Useful there. I'm useful. Very true. What did you want to be when you were younger? Yeah, there was first thing when I was, I wanted to be was an army man. I wanted to go to the army. Hmm. Music was not in the agenda. Like uh, I had learned music just for hobby, but some of that became my profession. The other thing was I learned only Carnatic music. My teacher was such a very purest Carnatic musician and learned for a very, very long time till I came to college. And mm-hmm. I was even barred from listening film music. Oh, really? I was barred from listening film music. The radio was taken off. Only time radio was put was at 9.30 in the night where that National radio program comes in, music program. It right. used to come at 9.30 in the night. Okay. Only that I used to do. No film music at all, I never. It was Carnatic music all the way. Now films are my bread and butter. See? It's the irony of life. That's destiny. Destiny. What is your lifelong dream? I have to know the purpose why I'm born, but I do not know. I want to know who I am. I do not know. I only hope that will happen soon. Self-realization. I have been reading a lot and a lot of books about it. But somehow, 
Even I don't know now. Maybe soon I'll realize myself. Amazing, amazing. Uh, I mean, uh, we come to the end of this wonderful, inspiring uh, chat show. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. I would really uh, same here. I want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart uh, in sharing uh, with you know such lovely experiences as a musician, as a composer to all of us. Thank, thank you so much. I should do that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you.